So How's everybody doing? Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Talkative group. So Dave, <laughs> Dave, you've been involved in the coaching thing for a couple of years, but more pro side of it. Uh, you know, just give us your thoughts of now a coach, college coach, how much different is this for you? <laughs> Uh, not too different, being that the players that I was around uh, in, in pro sports are all very young as well. Um, that that league is getting younger as well, so uh, I wouldn't say it's too different. Um, you know, they make they make their money, and our players make their money now, and it's just uh, just finding different ways to uh, manage people and and build relationships. That's all coaching is: teaching, managing, managing personalities and people, and and continuously building relationships with these guys. Considering um, the, the different obstacles that Josh has had since he started, have you talked to him and said, hey, what did you do to the basketball gods? What, what is happening? Uh, it's, all these things are conspiring against you. And what, what have you told him? Uh, I mean, everywhere has their adversity. I mean, I know regardless if you're in New York City or you're in Atlanta or you're in Morgantown, West Virginia, there's, there's adversity everywhere you turn, and how we handle it is, you know, just more or less banding closer together as a staff and as a team. And um, Josh has seen his fair share of adversity, probably none like this before on his uh, as, a, as a head coach, but he's seen his fair share of adversity. And if there's anybody I'm not worried about leading the, the troops is uh, my guy, Coach Eilert. Well, I was going to say, you're on the inside. You're around him. How has he handled this? And how has he responded, and how has he stayed so positive through all this? Well, he's a poised guy. He doesn't really uh, crack when bad things or, or bad information is coming to him. And honestly, at the end of the day, I would just I would just say he, he trusts our staff to do what they need to do. Um, and our players have made it a little bit easier for him as well, too. I mean, they're going through a tough scenario um, of dealing with these things and hearing about these the information that they see in the news. and. Like I said, Josh has just been very transparent with our players, open, honest, and makes it easy for our staff to be accountable. And um, and it keeps our it keeps our players trust. So it's everything's been working just fine. Sean, uh, Coach uh, Tyler has kind of told us a story about how you guys kind of grinded out this offense that you guys are running this year, and, and you guys kind of put it together. I just kind of just tell me the. Early stages of that. Is this an offense that you played in, or just something you guys came up with? Um, I would just say it's stuff. Some of the some of the actions, maybe not the entirety of the offense. Some of the actions are things I've seen uh, played in from time to time, um, and most of the stuff is uh, what Josh wanted as well. I mean, I wanted to figure out what he wanted, what he needed, what was suitable for our players. Um, which guys he wanted to go to, which guys he wanted to highlight in certain points of the offense, and finding finding these things and these actions uh, to help make our guys successful. I mean, um, and we wanted to change some things as far as uh, spacing and and uh, some of the things we felt we lacked uh, prior, and just you know, the, we ended up landing on what we have right now. Playbook that was fun. <laughs> no, it was very fun. I mean, I sat <laughs> sat around a, a lot of coaches who had playbooks, um, either they created or given to them by people above them that they had to run. And you know, just being able to have that uh, that trust from Josh and and also get a chance to work with him side by side and putting these things together and putting in our actions. It, it was awesome, and not to mention, I mean, it's not just me. You know, I do, I did help out a good bit, but just like Demar is helping out, and Alex is helping out, and Jordan's helping out because everybody has experiences and things that, you know, that worked for them. You know, I can sit here and put together stuff for for point guards, but I was never a point guard. Right. You know, Jordan would have a good idea of what would work for somebody off the ball, uh, or or excuse me, as a point guard, and same for Alex as as a as a very skilled guard and same for DeMar and the levels that he's played at in his career. So it's not just me working the offense. I mean, we have a lot of guys who formerly played and saw a lot of different things. And part of being a coach is, you know, being a good learner and being receptive to those things. So. Curious, I have one more here on Josh. Um, what's your message to the fans? I mean, he's following a Hall of Fame coach, one of the greatest of all time. He's dealing with all these things. What's your message to the Mountaineer fans out there about Josh and the program? Let's just um, continue to be consistent all around. 
as fans, as our staff, as our, we expect our players to be. Let's just continue, continue to be supportive and consistent. We're, no, we're not victims. <laughs> the bad things have happened, but, I mean, we're going to move forward, just like bad things have happened in the state, and we're going to move forward. And we treat it just the same. You know, we don't want our players to feel like, woe is me. That's not our, that's not our message. That'll never be our message. And we'll continue to take it one game at a time, one foot in front of the other, and that's what we'll do. Back to the offense a little bit in terms of plucking pieces from where? I mean, is it a lot from what you and Alex did in Europe? Go back to beeline, hugs? What, where are all the pieces come from for this offense? I mean, um, <laughs> that's tough in general. I mean, uh, I have probably like eight years of like professional playing experience well, like overseas. I, I got a chance to be near Eric Spolstra for a year. I got a chance to be near uh, Coach Pop for a year. And then working with uh, Tom Thibodeau and working with Steve Gansey in Atlanta using the Atlanta Hawks <laughs> offense, so more or less Nate McMillan. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that they run and actions that they ran that John Beeline ran. <laughs> so a lot of the stuff is just, you know, things I've seen that you recognize. Everybody takes everybody else's stuff, and you just figure out what actions will work. And the same thing with Alex. You know, Alex has a ton, a ton of experience of playing overseas and has played for some really great coaches, got a chance to play against Alex when I played overseas. So, I mean, like I said, played played with some very good coaches. And, you know, his knowledge in offense is <laughs> uh, extreme as well. So we, we just take a little bit of everything that we feel work. We talk a lot as a staff about what we can do offensively. And no one is uh, – I would say no one is like um, – protective over their uh, information or or guarded about uh, someone else presenting anything like this. We realize, like, you know, this year is very important to us as a staff and as a team. And the more information we get that can help our team out, the better. So. As a player, as a player today, you, you, you were able to take over games. Yeah, you were able to take over, take over games. And all of a sudden, you can't do that anymore. You're a coach. I mean, you. You can take them over on uh, a non-game day, but when they're out there playing, what, what's the transition been like? How hard is that to accept that, to watch guys either be able to do or not be able to do what, what you would have done? Not hard. I can't move anymore. So it's, uh, it's very it's easy for me to have a seat and just let these guys do what they're doing. But uh, I would just say the most difficult part is figuring out, like I told you before, managing personalities and then like, being able to have these relationships with these players it's important because now you got to know how to relay and articulate that message to them. And that was probably the most difficult thing for me at first. And it's something that you continue to work at. You don't, you don't meet one kind of person. You know, you continuously meet <laughs> different personalities every year, every day, whether that be through your players, whether that be through media, whether that be through on campus, whoever. So learning how to, you know, talk to people and, learning how to get the best out of the people that you're dealing with every day is, you know, an uh, ongoing learning, uh, uh, ongoing learning uh, ability that I, I need to continue to work at, so. How do you take what you had, you know, the drive or whatever it was, and find a way to get it into someone else? I mean, transfer it from you to them as a coach to player. Well, I gotta, like I said, I have to articulate it properly. Um, I have to figure out what motivates that person, and that's through building that relationship. I can't assume that they're like me or I'm like them. I mean, I have to figure out the thing that, the things that they like, what makes them <laughs> tick in a sense, and then once I figure out what motivates them, then that's something, that's a tool I can use to like get them to push to be the best version of themselves. They got to ask you, recruiting, you were the guy responsible for Neve, right? Yeah. Well, they, they talk about coaches flipping over rocks and finding guys. Um, go through that story because it looks like you found one there. Um, Donald Jackson. But, uh, <laughs> no, um, Ofri is such a great, great kid, a great guy, man, um, hard worker. Um, I had a feeling I was going to uh, really like him after I had our very first conversation on Zoom. Not a big talker. Yes, sir, no, sir kind of guy. And uh, he was very intrigued and excited about coming over to America. And his coach, who uh, excuse me, a guy who was getting ready to be his coach, uh, was my coach in Israel and one of the best coaches I've ever played for, uh, without a doubt. Um, and 
um, if he was going to play for him, I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, he can play. And I hadn't even gotten a chance to see him play um, at the time. So I got in contact with him, talked to him, and then when I got a chance to watch him play within two days, I mean, it was a no-brainer. I mean, he had a he had a very – he's very savvy basketball IQ. He knows the game. He knows how to play. He reads the floor very well. Um, one of his big things initially was just, you know, tightening up certain skill sets and making them more consistent. But, I mean, that's reps. And if I know anything about – our, uh, our our people over in Israel, those guys, they work hard. And uh, I got a chance to see that uh, at first hand. So uh, I wasn't worried about his work ethic. I heard nothing but great things about him from everybody I talked to. And once I saw him play, it was, a, like I said, it was a no-brainer. So it was a relationship and a trust? That no, you, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the people I talked to, the people I talked to were just phenomenal. And they, those are people I trust. Uh, I've been over there for two, almost three years. An opportunity, and it wasn't just the the head coach. Um, I got a chance to talk to Oded Katash, who's amazing. Um, I I literally searched every person in every relationship I built over in Israel because, I mean, it's a small country. Right. You know, if uh, if if he's as talented as they say he was, then everybody had an opportunity to see him. And it's good basketball over there, right? Very good basketball. Yeah. So you know, they and for a younger guy, you know, that's their NBA. So if he had an opportunity to play against some really good competition. I mean, this is why why not take that guy and bring him here. That breakaway bump. Did that surprise you a little bit? No, he's like one of our he's one of our better athletes. A very very quick fast twitch yeah. guy. So I was uh, more impressed with through the crowd of people that were near him. So you know, because he weighs 170 pounds, so he's a very thin guy. So and I was very impressed by uh, that aspect, but. Nothing not really nothing really uh, surprises me when it comes to Ofri. Uh, I knew once he got here our staff would really fall in love with him. And once he get, once you see him, it's just like, all right, he's kinda thin. I don't and then all of a sudden as he plays, you know, he plays much bigger than what he is. So Hey, in due time. I mean I'm sure he can figure something out while he's here. Yeah. Oh, okay. the, the the playbook stuff, safe to say you have like sole control of the buzzer beater chapter. Ooh, soul? Yeah, mm. that's all you. Soul control? I don't know if I have soul control. My guy Josh is uh, the captain of the ship for sure. Um, I would have, I, I would not hesitate to put in input, but same as most of our staff. You know, Josh gave me the opportunity to help him piece everything together, and then he gives our staff the opportunity to continue to add and critique and figure out what works best for our staff and our players. I think, I mean, to answer why here, I think I understand that, but like your career had been a lot of professional stuff, a little bit of college. Were you angling for NBA or pro? And like, eh, not for me. Were you open to anything? Were you trying to get into college? How'd you end up on this round here? Um, back here in West Virginia? Like, did, oh. you, did you pick one or the other? Did you like one more than the other? Did you read uh, I just like good one? basketball, honestly, and I like opportunity. And opportunity arose here with the, this job, and I couldn't turn down a great opportunity. And it was for me to come back home to West Virginia, you know, work with Josh, who I've met, I've known him since I was 19 years old, one of the first people I met here on campus. Uh, and he's somebody who I stayed in contact with throughout the years of me being here, not being here, playing overseas, checking in on him and his wife and his kids. Like, me and him have a really great relationship. So when he gave me that call, I mean, it was, like I said, it was a no-brainer. So. When Alex was in here last week, I was kind of asking the same thing. Uh, you and him, I mean, you guys aren't really that far removed from being recruited yourselves as, as players. Mm -hmm. Probably you know, may not agree with that. But uh, um, what, from that experience of being recruited yourself, the ins and outs, the good and bads of it, what do you take from that when you go out on the recruiting trail and are talking to kids, talking to families, things, things like that? Um. I would just say I give them everything I wish I heard and wish I knew prior. And then not to mention, just tell them everything about what the state and what the school can do for their, their children. I mean, everyone has a misconception of the state of West Virginia. So, you know, all I can do is I'm, I'm one of the people who are not from the state originally. And I'm a representation of people that are from, like I said, out of state. So they want to know why I stay, why I come back. And to talk about the people, talk about the state, talk about how welcoming the university 
is when you are here and when you leave. I mean, those are very important factors for people who are sending their kids here. You know, they want to know that they're not just sending their kids here and all hell is going to break loose <laughs> with their children. So, you know, just reassuring them that, you know, the guys that they have here who've been here for years and continue to come back um, that are on this staff um, who are from all over the place, I mean, just reassuring them that their, their children will be in good hands and they know what we're going to do for their child basketball-wise, but just are we going to take care of them and be there day-to-day -day for them? You know, I try to make sure I reassure them on that front because those are things I didn't think twice about when I came here for my visit. I was like, oh, the court looks nice. The coach is really cool. Yeah, I mean, but I didn't, I'm 18, like 17, 18 years old. How would I know what questions to ask about my university? I wasn't very as intentional as I should have been. And I'm glad I wasn't because it led me here. <laughs> so maybe I can be a little bit more helpful in giving them the brighter spots of our university and our state and and our staff when they come. So you said you knew Josh since you were 19, and, and he's been here a long time, and he's a quiet guy. What do the fans? What, what's the, his best attribute? What do the fans don't know about him that that makes him what he is? He, like I said earlier, he's poised and under control at all times. There's not, there's not many times I see Josh just like lose his mind and forget what we're what the mission is. Yeah. And we've had a lot of uh, a lot of things going on recently, and he he just does a great job of as a leader, just staying calm, cool, and collective, and always being the smartest guy in the room, always thinking of what routes we can and what we can't take, and. I would just say he's just been a great leader. You see that from the players? Did the players respond to that? They more than definitely respond to him. <laughs> um, so with that aspect, I would just say, like, the guys, this is the reason why a bunch of the guys came to, yeah. to his defense and came to his back about being the head coach. You know, he's somebody that they trust. He's somebody that they, they know uh, cares about them before the rest of our staff was even appointed. You know, he's different, right? He's a different type of guy, not a yeller or that type of thing. I mean, he can yell. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that's like you know the number one thing he does. He more he he's more going to teach versus go to barking. But I mean, he can flip that switch as well. I mean, I showed the, the scrimmage game. He yelled a little bit. <laughs> so, when did you decide you wanted to truly follow the coaching path? Was it always in the back of your mind? When did it become a realistic goal for you? Um, uh, I mean, it, w it was always in the back of my mind. I mean, as a high school player, I would go to coaching clinics with my dad, who was a coach at the time, and go watch, you know, Jay Wright talk. Uh, and Bob, not Bob Knight, but uh, <laughs> Bob Hurley talk. And, um, you know, see these guys, meet these uh, coaches, and just see what they're teaching and what I should be doing. And uh, go to college. I mean, fast forward, and I go to college. I mean, obviously, I'm focused about being a player. Um, and when I got hurt, I mean, coaching is definitely in the back of my head, but I really just miss playing. And I came back here as a GA, and I got a chance to see what coaches do, professional coaches do day to day. Um, and I was hooked by that. I was like, oh, this is what I really want to do. But at that time, not more than playing. <laughs> and I felt like it would have been a disservice if I was stuck around here and or stuck around coaching in general and, you know, wasn't 100% com committed and constantly thinking about playing basketball or thinking about it from a player's mentality versus, you know, it's good to have a player's mentality because I played, but at the same time, you can't approach everything like a player would. You have to, there's a certain way and a nuance to what you need to do as a uh, coach, so. Josh was, uh, he was talking about the offense and how when he was the video coordinator, he just spotted stuff he liked. Um, you were video coordinator. Like, would people just think, like, you have to be a coach on the bench or a GA to have experience? But, like, it's all relative in some sense. No, like, for what, sure. What did you get out of that that's, that's helpful or useful for this? Oh, uh, man, it was it was awesome experience. Um, just to be around some of the best coaches in the world and learn the reasons why they do what they do and then how they teach. Um it's rarely much yelling. <laughs> so like just teaching is the most important thing. And I would say at the next level, the best part about that is the players only respect what you know, not what you did as a, as a player. So 
you know, I had to really know what I was talking about if I were to speak, which rarely happened. It's nothing for me to tell. You have the greatest coaches around. I didn't say a word that I unless someone addressed me. So um, I would just say like that was it was a great experience, man. I got a chance to watch a lot of basketball, learn from a lot of coaches, and learn a lot of systems and see what I like, like you just said about what Josh said, um, see the things that I found interesting and see why certain things worked in certain situations and why certain things didn't, you know. And that's all coaching really comes down to a lot of times when you're not in charge. You say, oh, you want to see what works and you want to see what you will do and what you won't do. Are you watching like, practice tests and seeing how like, they're communicating through mistakes? Are you, yeah, like, why sure. they want to see a certain set or anything like that? Like it's part of they want this, but why? Or they say this, but why? Yeah, I mean, we, we get that because – and are you talking about here or are you talking about – oh, when I, as a coordinator, I mean – your coach is teaching everybody. He's not just teaching the players. So he's teaching the assistant coaches. He's teaching the video coordinators. He's teaching everybody. And everybody at a certain point in time, when it's time to uh, to go through, go through video, go through sets with players, go through anything, everybody should be reiterating his message. Are you working with the bigs now? Yeah. So I mean, obviously, a cook is out. Uh, depth wasn't great to begin with. Uh, Quinn's kind of moving in, so like, you know, you get out there on Monday. Uh, could I early foul trouble? I mean, I mean, could this making your job working with the bigs a lot harder now, right? I mean, uh, anything happened. I mean, it, I'm like, I can't. I, I at the end of the day, I really can't tell you what what could. I mean, literally, like you said, somebody can get in foul trouble. We have to go to another person. That's basketball, and that's just like the way things work. I mean, next man up, and next guy has to be ready. To play, I mean, like I said, we're not going to sit here and play the victim. Uh, what we have here is uh, a ton of opportunity for guys to come out there and take advantage of that opportunity. And uh, that's what we have. I mean, different scenarios that have run through your mind to prepare for. Uh, so many. Yeah. So many. Yeah. So, I mean, there's tons. And we talk about that stuff as a staff, yeah. but nothing, uh, how can I put this? Nothing that. It could be very alarming at times, but for the most part, nothing that makes us change anything we need to really do. I mean, we know what guys we could potentially go in and who, what guys we are in and what we're going to do and how we move forward if foul trouble or something else happens. So. You sound like you've become superstitious last hour. No, how so? <laughs> Am I knocking on the <laughs> – No, yeah, I just don't yeah, – there's no need to talk about the game until the game starts. Anything else is like, I mean, it's, just a, it's just a distraction, so – don't want to distract my guys while I'm up here talking to you. Yeah, I've never asked you this, but the, have you ever sat back and thought about that magical week at the Big East tournament and the why me, how that happened, uh, you know, how fortunate it was that those situations came up? You know, I mean, you can't, you can't make it situations for last second shots until they come. I mean, have you ever thought about fate and that kind of uh, stuff? I mean, then. And, I mean, all I can do, like, at that time, I mean, that was just something I never dealt with before in life. That was the first of uh, many that year and from beginning to end. And, you know, as a young young man, I mean, that was very difficult for me. But I'm just the kind of person that likes to just find any positive thing I could possibly find and latch onto it and then just try to uh, – Use that to continue continue to prop myself up. Yeah, those times were tough, but they made me into who I am today. And if I continue to play, who knows if I'd be coaching? I mean, I'd be playing potentially somewhere. I'm thinking more of the making three last shots. And- oh, I mean, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I had a blast. I had a good time. I mean, the ball could have been not wound up in your hands. No, I know, but I mean, most of those games were tied, so I mean, we were going to OT. So it was really nothing to really worry about in my eyes. I mean, it's just. I mean, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, happy I made him. Yeah. That was a pretty cool story. But. I mean, the difference between a make and a miss is, you know. No, it's just true. Not that much. Yeah, for sure. It really isn't. But at the same time, I mean, I was just happy and lucky that my teammates and the staff had faith in me and allowed me to go out there and take those opportunities. Who got the name of the plays? Josh got the name of the plays. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, don't, I didn't get that, that kind of freedom. Some good names. No, for sure. I mean, I threw. I threw. I'm not gonna sit there and say I didn't throw a name in the two, but no. Um, yeah, Josh definitely is the 
everything's funneling up. Right. You can't, yeah, you can't do that. I'm, I'm just the assistant, so. Coach, thank you. Appreciate you guys.